Hello everyone and welcome back to another livery showcase video. Today I'm going to be taking the class 483 on the Isle of Wight from Ride Pairhead to Shanklin, showcasing my new island line livery, which reflects the real life counterpart um, red and yellow island line livery from when the 483s was still in service. Before we fully get into this video, I'm gonna ask all of you to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and if you would like to see more of these videos in the future. Let's get into it. So first things first, let's open the doors and let's get the train set up. But of course, we always gotta do this every time we start the game up. Just gotta change some of these settings around. I'm gonna change my crosshair visibility and the motion blur. And all of that should be good. Now, let's uh, turn on the master key. Put the seat down. Now, I haven't driven a 483 in a little while now. So, I might be a bit rusty. Uh, but from what I can remember, the windows slide down just a little bit like that. Um, this would be our headlights and stuff. I'm not going to turn the cab lights on. Let's go instrument lights and headlights. And I'm going to turn on the passenger lights back here all right lights on and that's all good let's take a good look at the outside of this train as you can see it is based off of the uh real life counterpart red and with the yellow front for the uh british rail i, I believe this is um mandatory in uh, the UK to have the yellow front. I don't think it's mandatory on any of the newer trains, but um, yeah I made this a couple months ago uh, just on my own time just wanting to see a bit of variety on the island line and uh, Since I'm not really in the mood of making any more newer liveries I did decide to make this video after a uh, poll on YouTube But uh, let's get the train moving um, All of that should be good in the cab Let's get it moving now, uh, I do enjoy operating the Class 483. Um, I don't have the 1938 tube stock um, DLC because I just feel like it's not worth the money that they're asking. Maybe if it's on sale in the future, I would decide to pick it up. But um, I'm not really a fan of the way they made the 1938 stock. It's way too similar to the 483. And I know they're basically the same train with just a little bit of changes, you know. They still could have improved the way the sounds were um, from the original 483 to the 38 stock and I'm just not happy with the way that train was handled but one thing I do like about this train is um the two uh handle design you know it reminds me a lot of trains in the New York City area um we run uh some of our older units with these uh two handle designs except it will be like reversed so your throttle will be over here your brake will be over here but it works uh, basically the same way you know you pull your brake lever like this uh, um, put it on um, but the brakes are a little stronger on our units and um, it, it's a little more complicated complex um, this train it's a bit more um, simplified and, and antiquated but uh, we're approaching ride Esplanade let's get a nice outside shot of the train coming into the station stop at the two marker up here open the doors so have any of y'all heard about the new uh class 484 rolling stock on the um on the island line in real life i think that's pretty cool you know converting some of the old d stock trains from the london underground um into use on the island line i think that's pretty cool i'd love to see a uh, dlc in the future 40 class 484 and some of the um, the changes along the island line to go along with it. I believe they uh, reinstated the braiding passing loop in real life um, along with some other things um, to kind of modernize the island line. I believe there's now countdown clocks on the island line. Uh, please correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong on that one, but I believe there's countdown clocks now on the island line, PIS screens. They are trying to modernize it a bit. I do like that. Currently, I think service is um one train per hour, but they're trying to upgrade it to uh, two trains per hour or a train every 30 minutes. And I think that's pretty cool. 
But we are going through the tunnel, heading to uh, Ride St. John's Road. Let's just lower our speed a little bit. You know, this is one of the few routes in the game that I can say, you know, the, they, the track noise was done pretty well on it. Um, and I don't mean the way it actually sounds. I mean, you know, just being able to hear it in the first place, you know. You don't hear this in a lot of other routes um, that should have it, like LIRR, Cap Car Circle, and stuff like that, you know. Um, but they really did nail, like, just having the constant sound of track noise on this route, you know. And as much as we like to um, hate on Rivet and uh, talk uh, negatively about some of the stuff they put out, you know, I think this route was done relatively well. You know, it was a buggy release, and we can't really forgive them for the way the route released. However, you know, looking back on it now, it has its its issues, but um, I, I really do like it. It's a nice calming route to just, you know, hop on and drive. If you're looking for a nice calm, you know train operating experience but yeah this is delivery um it was not much it didn't take much to actually make this delivery you know it was it was a pretty quick one to do one thing i can say is i'm happy that rivet allowed us to keep the common text on the front of the train so keeping the uh unit numbers on the front and the sides i really do appreciate that it just makes it so much easier to make delivery instead of having to you know remake all of this all of the text on the side you know just it made it so much easier so i really do appreciate the rivet for doing that with delivery designer but here we are approaching ride st john's road <clears throat> gonna try and stop accurately here there should be stop markers on the platform i believe we're coming up to the stop marker right here yeah brakes are pretty strong on this train it's it's kind of difficult in my opinion to kind of like get a hold to get a good grip of the brakes you know because it's either you're not braking strong enough or you're braking too hard it's difficult to kind of manage the brakes here we are with the uh, ride St. John's Road Yard here. Got a nice uh, number of passengers here on the platform waiting for the train. I do like that. Let's get the doors closed and start moving towards the next station. We do have a uh, yellow signal though. Well, a red signal. So we're just going to creep up to it and hopefully it changes. Yep, there it goes. So that's all good. So now we got to go by instruction for Smallbrook Junction. I'm just going to pop the train into forward too. So we could get that extra bit of uh, power for this fast section that's coming up here. You know, with the amount of uh, British content that I've been doing recently, it, it always brings me back to the, the question, you know, where's DTG going to go next for uh, British routes, you know? There's none um, on the roadmap currently, and I'm very interested in seeing what else they do for the UK. Um, we know that Sherman Hill is coming out this, this, uh, this week on the uh, 25th, which is Thanksgiving um, here in the United States. And um, I'm just interested in seeing, you know, what gets added to the roadmap after um, Sherman Hill is released. It's definitely going to be very interesting to uh, see. So we have a yellow signal up here. I'm going to slow down a bit. I believe that was a repeater signal. Yep, it was. So we're just going to keep the brakes on. It seems like that signal is red to allow that train to pass. But that train just did pass. So we're going to keep our speed. Actually, let's put it in coast. Since we do have to stop here at Smallbrook Junction.
See, that's what I mean with the brakes. It's kind of difficult to like judge it, you know. It's either you're not braking hard enough, or you're braking a little too hard to stop. Got a little rivet branded uh, ticket there. We should be leaving Smallbrook Junction soon. I don't often stop here at Smallbrook Junction. Usually, you know, the instructions just go past. Seems like we closed that a little too early. Let's close that again. There we go. Next stop is braiding. But uh, back to talking about Sherman Hill, you know, I'm, uh, I actually like how the Sherman Hill uh, route looks. You know, I'm not a big fan of American Freight, but I do like um, how they kind of upgraded and uh, improved freight, you know, since the last release with Cane Creek. You know, we're, we're back with Union Pacific, but we have a all new loco with the ES, I believe it's the ES40 AC or ES4400 AC. I'm not really sure um, the name of the train. Uh, but it is pretty cool from what I saw. The route is a pretty fast one, you know. I did see Matt Spad at the end of it, which was pretty funny. But um, I'm, I'm very interested in, you know, over 100 car long trains. I, I think that's pretty cool. And uh, it's innovative for TSW. You know, I'm, I'm glad Matt's in that new uh, ex executive producer role because it seems like TSW is starting to go in the right direction again. Um, but I'm very interested in seeing how, how they could keep this up, you know, in the future. I'm not sure if I'll pick up the Sherman Hill route. I might because of how interesting it looks, but uh, no guarantees. Um, and I'm kind of getting into the habit of, you know, not making reviews for new routes and stuff, you know. I've, I've kind of, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of getting tired of making reviews, you know, because it feels like I have to say the same thing over and over again in each route review, you know. I'd rather just talk about the route in a regular video instead of make a whole review about it of just stuff I've talked about already, you know. Like on the Cathcar Circle Line review, I mentioned track noise, and I have to mention track noise again in the London Commuter review. review, review. Um, I'm kind of getting tired of making reviews for each individual route that comes out, which is why I kind of skipped Risa to Dresden, because I just felt like that route wasn't making a, uh, worth making a review on. Especially because the route just kept continuously um, crashing on me, so I couldn't really give a detailed and descriptive review of what's actually in the route without just bashing it because it kept crashing for me, you know? Um, so that is an issue, but I, I can't really say I'm going to be making too many more reviews on TSW routes. So if I do get Sherman Hill, it might just be, you know, some regular here and there. I'll make a, uh, uh, not a review, but a, a video for when I first get the route, you know, first impressions or whatever. But that's only if I get the route, if I choose to. It does look very interesting, though. I'm looking um, forward to Horseshoe Curve as well because, um, you know, we haven't really seen what Skyhook is capable of. You know, Cane Creek was like their first thing, their first venture into creating routes for TSW. But um, we haven't seen much from them besides that. You know, the 187 was a bust. Let's just be completely honest about it. It was not a good look for Skyhook Games. Um, but I'm very interested in seeing how Horseshoe Curve is going to come out. And I wonder if we're going to see any AI Amtrak trains. I, I expect not to, being that um, TSW doesn't have P32s and P42s, which is the trains that run on the line in, um, in real life. Um, so you can't really put in ACS 64s because it is an unelectrified line and it would look pretty out of place but yeah that's another thing I'm looking forward to I'm also looking at a uh, Ch Chesnitz uh, to Dresden that route um, not much has come out on that route in terms of news and stuff so I can't really talk about it or anything but um, I'm definitely interested in what's going on with that one So we're coming up to, I believe this is braiding here. I'm 
going to come in for a nice smooth stop here. There we go. See if we can get a nice little picture of the train here. Now, um, I'd like to take a, the, the, a moment to just talk about, you know, what's going on with my other channel, Mystic Transit. Um, I recently started a new series where I talk about, you know, all of the new information regarding rail and just public transport in the New York, um, New York City area. And uh, it's been doing pretty well on that channel. I suggest if you're interested in, in new news and stuff about just rail transport in the U.S. and New York and all that, I definitely suggest checking it out. You know, it's a lot of... Um, a lot of cool stuff over there in those videos and I'll talk about uh, some of the new stuff some of the new information new news and all of that and I give my own opinions and thoughts on what's going on with rail and infrastructure in the area so I definitely suggest checking that out you know I'm definitely trying to grow Mystic Transit into a uh, bigger community kind of like the one we have over here on Mystic Xenos um, we should be ready to depart here so let's just lock those doors. I'm going to release the brakes and we're going to put it into notch two. I think that was a pretty nice... Uh, view of the train you might have noticed that was the uh, beginning shot of the video <laughs> yeah um, I'm trying to you know trying to improve some of my editing editing skills with some of my newer videos and uh, if you are a subscriber to mystic transit you would have definitely seen an increase in um, like uh, better editing and stuff um, increase of quality I guess in some of those videos Especially with some of the newer ones um, this week in New York uh, City Transit, you know. I definitely try and put a lot of time and effort to make sure I'm getting the right information and all of that. And making sure the video is nice to watch and good for audio listeners as well. You know, some people just like to uh, put on a video, have it on in the background while they're doing something else, you know. I try and make it available for those people as well. Um, so I definitely highly recommend it check it out it's on the mystic transit channel the link will be down in the description below you just scroll down there right now you can check it out and you can subscribe to that channel you know i got another series on over there at least few stations of the new york city subway system um kind of like what jeff marshall um did with um the london underground um his least used station series except for me, I'm doing it with the New York City subway, of course, and I feel like I give a bit more information on the, the station's backstory, the station's history, the line's history, and stuff like that. Why it is the least used station? I just try and give all of that information, try and make the videos more enjoyable to watch and, and stuff like that. Try and keep viewers, you know, in, enjoyed and, and um, enjoyment in the video, you know. Here we are approaching sand down here. I'm gonna start uh, lowering our speed since we do have a 15 limit coming up. I find it amazing that these old uh, units are just able to, well, were able to uh, just hold it out and uh, operate on the island line for about maybe 30 to 40 years now. Really impressive shows how durable these units were from 38. Sad to see them go though, but uh, they were, it was time for a uh, replacement, time for a change. And I think the, uh, the, the modified D-stock trains, the 484s, are a good replacement for these. You know, automated announcements, um, LED screens on the interior, Wi-Fi, USB charging, all of that stuff. 
feel like they're a great replacement for the class 43s. And it's a nice use of the old retired D stock cars. I'm just happy to see those trains back out on the rails, you know. The C and D stocks of the London Underground were two of my favorite rolling stocks of all time. And I think the reason for that is I used to watch a lot of videos on World of Subways 3 with the Circle Line and the District Line and all of that. And um, I think those videos is what made me uh, like the D, the, the C and pause the C and D stock uh, so much. You know, they they were two uh, pretty cool rolling stocks, and I did like the uh, I liked the um, how the cab looked on those. You know, you come over here to. Um, set up your headlights and all of that you got the brake test over here and then you got the one throttle controller you got your announcements display over here i thought that was pretty cool let's just put the dead man's handle back down there we go make sure we didn't cause an emergency brake there you know one thing that's pretty unsettling is this gap between the train and the platform it reminds me a lot of the London Underground, you know, uh, like Waterloo, stations like that, you know, having this big gap, except it would be on more of a curve, you know. It might it might have just been because of the way the route was created, you know, where it just didn't bring the platform close enough to the actual train. But uh, I don't know. It, it, it's, it seems a lot like, you know, the Underground to me. One thing I do wish is there was an, uh, uh, I wish there was an option to uh, be able to just stand up and operate the train, you know, from that type of position. There we go. Forgot we had the 10 mile an hour limit for a minute. Got a whistle board up here. So, uh, this upcoming week, I have a couple of cool videos coming out, you know, besides this one, of course. Um, I have my Thief Circle Line Suggestion uh, video finally coming out. I should be working on that, starting work on that in a couple of days now. I have the script finished for that video, so I could just record it, record the voiceover, you know, edit it. Boom, that'll be out um, and available for all of you to watch. That should be around maybe uh, Wednesday, I'm not too sure. Um... And I have my LIRR um, unfinished add-ons video coming out. Um, I have the videos in TSW for that already. I have the script finished. So again, all I have to do is edit and record the voiceover. Um, and then next week, I have a couple more videos that I'm trying to do. I want to do a livery designer wish list video. Um, and I'm I'm currently working on that script right now. You know, whenever I have a little bit of free time, I'll write a little bit more of the script. You know, just whatever's on my mind about the livery designer, I'll talk about it. Um, but I wanted to make that video because it's, um, on the roadmap, as you can see, you know, uh, DTG is apparently creating a livery designer in Scenario Planner 2.0. And I kind of wanted to get my thoughts about the livery designer and what can be improved out there in, in form of a video, you know. So just in case DTG's wondering, you know, who... Who wants what with the livery designer? You know, if there's enough support on that video, we could probably get some new types of features into the livery designer and into the game. So that's why I want to make that type of video. Um, that should be coming out next week. Um, and yeah, I'm going to be talking about things like common text, like this train. We have common text on this one, which makes it so much, so much easier to create these liveries. I'm going to be talking about the fonts, uh, placing text down, because if you don't know, um, placing text down in the livery designer is such a hassle because you have to put, um, let's say you were trying to spell out island line, right? You would have to individually select I, place it in, center it, right? Select S, size it down, place it in, center it individually. Each letter would probably take like a good minute or two just to get centered, you know? And I feel like just being able to type something out, Properly, I feel like that would make um, delivery designer so much easier to use and um, more available for everyone, you know, so you don't, you aren't just wasting time on such the finer um, details and stuff. So I'm definitely making a uh, livery designer video. I already got that. 
thought I didn't get that ice cream for a minute. I was about to <laughs> turn into my completionist again. My completionist side and uh, collect those. But yeah, I'm definitely making that livery designer wish list video. I have a couple more videos that's coming up. Um, if I were to just check my schedule here. You know, I'm working on another TSW2 in-depth analysis video. But I haven't made a um, the poll on YouTube yet to see what route y'all would like me to um, create an in-depth analysis video on. Um, I should be making that in a, in the near future. However, um, I kind of want to wait until I get some more of these videos that I have backed up out to all of you before, you know, starting work on new ones. Because I have a lot of videos that I've been working on, a lot of scripts and stuff that I could just edit the videos and get out to all of you. Um, but I am thinking about in-depth analysis videos and possible routes that I could put on the pole and stuff. And the route we're on right now, the island line, you know, this. I'm, I'm thinking about making an in-depth analysis video on this. Um, I'm not sure about LIWR. I'm not sure if it would be smart to make an in-depth analysis video on that. Or something like the, the Munich S-Bahn. I would love to make a livery designer on both of those um, two. However, I feel like with such a small amount of uh, route there is for both of them. I'm, I'm not sure if it'd be worth it, you know. Um, I've already done the Baker Lou line, so there's definitely there's definitely more stuff that's coming to the channel. I'm definitely bringing back in-depth analysis. Livery showcase is still going. Um, I've still got the suggestion videos um, still going. Now, I know I was gone for like a whole week, and you know and things have kind of changed a bit on the channel, but I'm definitely still here. All the series that all of you love is still here. Um, even passenger rides, even though I know I haven't been uploading consistently uh, passenger rides and stuff. But that's just because those videos don't get too much attention. And those is more of the chill and relaxed videos. And I would love to make more of those. But, you know, there's much more I could be working on besides that that would prove um, better for my channel and stuff. But here we are at Shanklin. It's the last stop. All change, please. Here we here we go. That's a pretty nice picture right there. Yeah. Let's get that. Oh one oh. I really do like how the train looks, especially in the island line livery. But um hopefully all of you did enjoy that video. Hopefully you enjoy the livery. You like how it looks. Hopefully it's realistic. Um and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. And uh peace.